Welcome back to TTC in our sixth light lumen test episode. We built a DIY light integration sphere to call out overzealous lumen labelers and had a lab qualified for this sort of thing test the same lights and our calibration has been pretty spot on. Today we test an assortment of pen lights, pocket lights, sort of long slim EDC lights that you might clip into your pocket, which is pretty popular among people poking around cars for a living, which is our background so we felt it was worth a look. Basically, we took all the top recommended brands from the comment section in our last lighting video and bought those, which includes both alkaline battery and rechargeable battery models. So today we're going to test their lumen output versus their claims, which range massively from 140 to 1200 lumens, quote unquote, then test their light output across their runtime, which usually is the true equalizer here, then spike these on the ground to see which fail first, not because we want to, but because, you know, science guys. We're going in order of advertised lumen output today, which means we're starting here with the Harbor Freight Quantum at $20, which is sort of their only rechargeable quantum flashlight for some reason. On this channel, Harbor Freight's had a bit of a reputation for skewing their stats, always in their favor when it comes to numbers on the box. Some of their cheap lights have been rather spot on, but some others and, well, a lot of their products, eh, some rose-colored glasses, let's say, when interpreting their own data. This one advertises 140 lumens, which isn't a whole lot. And while in person and in an engine bay, where we're often using these, you need to bring this thing pretty close in to see what's going on. Once you're not right up in the engine bay, things get quite dim. But let's see what she can make. In episode one, we had a lab verify testing down to 127 lumens, so we should be within the ballpark here. Waiting 30 seconds per the ANSI F01 standard, and we're seeing 120, 121, 122, 120 lumens. Low is about 45 and high again here at 120. That's 86% of their 140 claim. I mean, not amazing percentage-wise, but that is sort of just a handful of lumens, though at this level, every bit helps. Hopefully helping out a bit with a bump in the numbers is the next highest rated pen light today, the AAA-powered Olight i3T EOS, also for 20 bucks. This is an extra small EDC style light. We went with this one because it was one of the higher lumen single AAA lights, and we wanted to see if this size and price point are enough to be useful while keeping our shirt pockets free for more leaky pens. The Olight feels super high quality and the insides and sort of copper tone threads are just frankly really impressive. We'll be using a single AAA to match all the others we'll be using today. Its on button felt a bit stiff to me, and in an engine bay, it's similar to the Quantum, not a ton of light to be sure. It's a bit more spot focused in high candela beam style, so you can get some range out of it, but that spot focus means its spread is quite small. And here's how that 180 lumens looks like in the sphere. So we're seeing after 30 seconds, 156, 154, 155. So 155 lumens, again, 86% of advertised. So right in with the Harbor Freight sort of bar that we're setting here. And that is high, low is only a few lumens. We suspect a brand new AAA may get close to 180, but that one small battery doesn't stand much of a chance after any real use. We'll have to see in our upcoming runtime test. Next up is the 200 lumen, also $20 lumen top IYP365. Inside of its sort of fancy packaging, you'll find an also sort of fancy light that looks pretty high quality. The top button is aluminum for a change, but we didn't like it too much, sort of wobbles around and click clacks about. But that's purely preference. This returns to that sort of true pen shape, fitting two AAAs inside this time. This also has a sort of spot focus beam, but less constrained so than the Olight. And in person, it seems to illuminate an engine bay a bit better than the Olight as well. It just comes across as a little bit more useful. But here's how the 200 lumens measures up though. We're seeing 158, 157, 155, nearly identical output to the Olight, but advertised as 200 rather than 180. Interesting, looks a bit better in person, but same total lumen output and low is around 40 lumens. That 157 is just 79% of their claim in this case. Next up is the Streamlight. Despite doing three of their lights already on this channel, we get a lot of comments about leaving them out anytime we do. And it makes sense. This model steps things up to $30 now, but is rechargeable, is rated for 250 lumens and is ranked fifth in sales among all flashlights on Amazon, making it the first of any rechargeable light. So we had to include it for sure. This one charges with micro USB and is pretty tiny, around the same size as the Olight single AAA. And after charging it up, its light output looks very nice. And in an engine bay, pretty useful too. You can sort of focus its beam if you need some distance 
or more spot intensity, or widen it for more coverage. Seems like plenty of light for this sort of thing, but let's check that 250 lumens. We're seeing 229, 228, 227. Yeah, that's a solid 228 from us, pretty close. At least 91%, and we're not going to begrudge them over 20 lumens in our DIY foam sphere, okay? Next up in lumens, but down in price, is the Energizer rechargeable 400 lumen light at only 19 bucks, making it the cheapest light so far. And 400 lumens, for real? I mean, it does appear pretty damn bright in person with a non-spot focus beam, which we personally prefer for this up close stuff, and appears they are targeting mechanics after all. When you compare it versus the Olight, it is just putting out a lot more light. Of course, with rechargeable, there is downtime compared to quickly swapping out an alkaline battery, but there's also no cost and waste associated with it. In the engine bay, it puts out a ton of light, almost more than needed really. This is verging on normal flashlight territory, and we don't get that wash out from spot focus beams up close. But in the old sphere, well, she's seeing, yeah, about 400 lumens, pretty spot on. Low is about 140. Then there's that useless strobe, and 400 again. So that's getting full marks from us 100%. Our next flashlight is just a bit extra in all categories. Now extra lumens at 450, back up to $30 now too. They email us extra times all the time to try to get us to take free products, which we don't accept. And its size is a bit bigger as well due to taking two AA batteries. This is the Through Night Archer V3. Through Night's a much requested brand in our comments section, which is why we're including it despite their emailing persistence. And this is currently the number one best-selling flashlight on all of Amazon, so we sort of had to. We chose the 450 model rather than their 500 Archer because it's neutral white color temperature rather than cool white, which if we had to make a choice like we are here, we prefer a warmer color like the Milwaukee uses. This model is a bit bigger due to using AA batteries and is sort of on the upper end of what we'd consider a pocket light, really. It was honestly a bit more bulky than we were imagining when we purchased it, but it does look bright, properly aided in part by having access to three times the battery capacity when using double A's versus triple A's. In the old engine bay, the neutral white is a little bit nicer, but not a huge difference. It's bright, but also that high candela focus washes out some of the details already at this brightness level. Might be more of an outdoors camping light if we're honest, but we wanted to see how a double A battery light fit in this lineup. So let's see how the bean counter likes its 450 claim. So with fresh batteries like the rest, it's seeing only 344, 342, 340, and that is high. Low is like 6 lumen, medium's 40, and high again 332. That's just 76% bright for sure, but not quite 450 bright. But if that sounds bad, hold on to your butts because we have the infamous Amazon special 1200 lumen rated dual AAA battery powered pen light from V Best Life. But if we're honest, you can find these identical lights floating around Amazon rated for 1000 or 1200, all the same thing for varying cost depending on how many you want to buy at a time. Ours was $10, but you can find them for as low as $4 to $5 a piece. And the packaging and product feel, yeah, speaks to that $4 to $5 max in the hand as well. It does make some light, spot focus for sure, and in an engine bay, passable because of that spot focus area being just bright enough, but not going to be impressing the ladies with this one. But we're anxious to see how those 1200 lumens from AAA batteries stacks up. All right, here we go. 119, 114, yep. And it doesn't have any other modes, just that 110 or so lumens. So just 9.6% of that advertised level, and most of these have decent reviews, guys. This is how much you can trust Amazon reviews for this sort of stuff. I mean, an empty soda can feels more substantial than this. So this is how things look so far. Basically, their claims versus what they make out of the box with charged or new batteries. So that runtime, let's take a look. Up first, we have the alkaline battery flashlights. So that's Olight, then Lumitop, then Through Night, and Amazon Special over here. The only light that's supposed to drop out of high is the Through Night, which should step down to about 280 lumens. The Through Night does drop down just as they say. The O Light drops out super quick though, becoming useless within 10 minutes, followed by the Amazon 12 Hundo, and the Lumen Top holds much more steadily, but drops out as well before the hour mark with the rest of the AAA models. 
The through night, yeah, that three times battery capacity being put to good use. They said it would step down to 280 and it pretty much does. And for a long time, settling down eventually after the two hour mark, pretty big difference, but also pretty decent size difference as well. Let's take a look now at the rechargeables. We got the Streamlight, Energizer, and Harbor Freight over here. The Energizer drops real fast from its huge 400 figure where it will die off first at about an hour and a quarter. The Streamlight and Harbor Freight remain a bit more gradual in their descent, but the Harbor Freight just being sort of useless most of that time, the Streamlight putting up more of an effort. Here's how all of them look on screen now. Obviously the through night providing the most consistent light of all of them, but it's also getting pretty toasty, 132 degrees on the handle at times. If we consider everything over 100 lumens to be useful for what we do, it weeds out a few lights from the get-go. Olight, Harbor Freight, and the Amazon all fall below that within 10 minutes. That just seems not super useful to anyone. The Lumen Top lasts about half hour, maybe 35 minutes before doing the same about three times more useful than those others. The Energizer, yeah, that drops down pretty dramatically, unfortunately. But looking at the curve, that's still more usable time than these others and a lot of light during it. But ironically for the brand, it's let down by its battery not being able to keep up with those lumens, about 50 minutes of usefulness. The Streamlight was able to keep up pretty good, about 70 minutes, decent amount of light output for its tiny size, pretty impressive overall. For charging, the three that do charge took very low levels of amperage, and all have a similar size battery, one and a half to two and a half hours of charging, not very interesting there. All right, last stop before we put all these stats together for you is durability. It's not much help if a pen light is bright, if when you get it wet or drop it, it breaks very easily. All these lights today didn't seem to be too bothered by the hose, so we'll call that equal. But for dropping them, yeah, that's a whole nother story. We drop these all at once each time to try and keep things even. And right out the gate, the first drop after our dropping intro, the through night is done. Only light to perish, perhaps it's just too heavy for its own good, never came back from this. And that was about tripod height, so three feet. Four feet and all were fine. Five foot, similar story, but the Energizer is stuck in low now, so sort of not in the mix anymore. Six foot and same thing, Energizer working but only in low. Seven and eight foot, the lumen top shuts off each time, but is fine after, it can be turned back on. And we're retiring that low energizer now. 10 feet killed the Amazon. About time, if you ask me, on that tin can. 11 foot in the streamlight now turns on when you hold the button, but that's about it, it won't stay on. 12 foot broke the lumen top and the quantum, so Olight is the champion here, that thing is very nicely made. Just wish it was a bit brighter for longer. Probably that single AAA's battery fault there. And here's all of our data in one sheet. Of course, the Amazon made the least compared to their claims in true Amazon fashion on this channel. The through night was a surprise though, despite its step down from 280 lumens appearing to be very accurate for those claims. Runtime it runs away with though, followed by the other rechargeables up here. Average lumen output across the run though, that's the real dividing stat on this channel. Through night AA followed by the Energizer due to starting out so high. Then the impressive tiny Streamlight. Then the Lumatop, the Harbor Freight, Amazon, and Ownlight. And then durabilities over here with them being placed pretty much the exact opposite to those average lumens we were just talking about for some reason. Both of these lights are smaller than an average pen, but the Streamlight far outpacing the Olight and well, yeah, $10 more for it. As far as our picks, this is our number one and what we will be rebuying. Takes the least amount of space in your pocket and performed well overall, we think, compared to all the lights today. This one would be our choice for camping. It's just a bit too big to fit comfortably all day in your pocket without comments from the receptionist. And at a similar size, just get an 18650 light with more light, more runtime, and everything. But don't take it hiking as it's the most fragile but we'll keep your hands warm on a cold night on the way to the John. The Energizer gets our best value, $19 and a whole lot of lumens. If it lasted longer, it would have gotten probably number one, I reckon, but really just buy two of them for $38 and you could be done with it. Honorable mention goes to the Lumen Top for just being sort of the best traditional pen size that we tested. What are your thoughts? Peeved we skipped over Olight's and Through Night's traditional pen size rechargeables? Some other brands in our blinders? Let us know. 
click some stuff to catch the next one. And thanks as always for watching.